Fred Tickcomb found the frog in his bathroom sink on a Monday, midway through his morning ablutions. Little did he know at the time that this very frog would cause his eventual voluntary incarceration and end his 24-year-long marriage to his wife, Mildred. <laughs> you are from the gods. Mildred Tidgo was mystified by Fred's enthusiasm to keep the frog. Past efforts when she had asked for a pet ended in financial excuses. But Mildred was not one to pass on such a great opportunity, even if it was just a frog. A week later, a parcel arrives at the door. Hey, huh? hey Terry, look at the frog down there on the left. They did a nice pass, you can say it's pride on sex. Approaching the drop of Jodow, opening my jaws, Lara and Winch. Winch retrieved, it's all up for today. Be on the wild right idea, mate. We're doing a pilot's grabbing sex. Fourteen minutes later. Come on, I brought it for you, sweetheart. Luxury it is. Actually, we, we, don't, we don't actually consider it a thing because the, 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 the are handled by You're using it! Fred buying a 40-grant relaxo added to Mildred's suspicion. It was true that Fred was a patron of the local bookies, but he didn't go down there every afternoon weekday for two hours to fritter his money away. He went to laugh at his desperate compadres. To Fred, there was nothing like seeing his fellow punters lose the remaining life savings they had left in a matter of seconds on one bet. To put it bluntly, Fred's pockets were as taut as a well-maintained human sphincter. The weekly shopping consisted of more free discount item vouchers than actual cash. A day later, as the frog was asleep in the kitchen's draining bar and Mildred started lunch, a conflict would break out between the two over noise pollution. <laughs> Quango concluded that Mildred's fainting was down to a delayed shock reaction. He prescribed several days of rest and crampon G, an ultra-fast healing drug which was to be taken once daily. By the fourth day, the bite had healed almost completely. Two days later, the frog would score an ultra hit at tea time. <laughs> Rubbish. But I think we have to pay a license fee for this crap. Huh? Here you go, love. You can have the rest of the plate. It 
took Mildred five days to rid the smell of regurgitated bean juice on her clothes. As these days progressed, Fred's daily outings down to the bookies grew from two to three hours. Interestingly, the frog began to accompany Fred too. It was time for Mildred to do a little detective work as regards to the other hour. Hey, the frog is here. <laughs> 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 Fred was having an affair with a frog. Luckily, fate or coincidence, it would seem, comes in many ways. That night, on reading the local newspaper classifieds, Mildred would come across something in the lost pet section. Lost rare frog. I have lost one of my most prized pet frogs. Husband Snatcher will offer hefty reward if found. Phone the frogman on 167-485-10 Frumbo. The next day in the afternoon when Fred and the frog were out, Mildred would phone. On communication, she agreed on the date of pickup. Eight in the morning, the coming day. Before bed, she spiked Fred's beloved evening cup of tea with sleeping pills. Restraining him with gaffer tape and a bin liner or two, Mildred moves him into the stair cupboard. She then proceeded with the frog, using a suckleberry wiener as the phallic bait. By 8.30 tomorrow morning, Mildred will be heading in the direction of the city. <laughs> Good day. Look, I ain't got time for good days or goodbyes. Time is of the essence. Let's do this fast, frog boy. Yes. That is. You mind your words, you cop out of that filthy pug hole. The frog. No, you don't. What about this reward? Telekinesis it is, then. Huh? Uh, Oi, straight out of my hands. You can't go round doing that. What, what are you doing now? You got your frog. What and where is this reward? Uh, your reward, infinite joy debit card. Oh, it's beautiful. Bloody racists. And so, Mildred travelled to the city, sold the incriminating photos to the local tabloid newspaper. The photos got to the front page, and she received a shitload. Which was very nice, considering she already had the infinite joy debit card, containing an everlasting supply of money from that nice guy, the Frogman. Instead of abusing the card like so many people would have done, Mildred moved to Ipswich, a provincial town of little to no interest. Changed her name to Anna Jenkins, and put her financial powers to good use, renovating the risotto a deserted block of flats in the middle of Ipswich. She moved into this room and became the landlady. With her past erased, it is here where she stayed for the remainder of her life, most of the time watching TV soaps. Fred, on the other hand... Suicide, religion, or the Frogger's Offenders Institute for rehabilitation. Uh, uh, where are you going, Fred? You can't get out. Uh, what are you doing? We ain't going to let you out and start things you think. Fred never did get over his lust for a frog. Sally, my friends, I have no moral to give, but here is a wise word that somebody said once. Don't play with matches. <laughs> <laughs>